Objective 3. Approximate the standard deviation from a frequency distribution. The procedure for approximating the standard deviation from group data is similar to that of finding the mean from group data. Because we do not have access to the original data, the standard deviation is approximate. Now, approximate standard deviation of a variable from a frequency distribution. Here we have a population standard deviation and a sample standard deviation. Now, if you take a look at the population standard deviation, we have sigma, which is equal to the square root of the sum of the midpoint minus the mean squared times the frequency divided by the sum of this frequency. Now, when you're dealing with the sample standard deviation, it's slightly different than what you see from the population standard deviation. S is going to equal the square root of the sum of the midpoint minus the mean, the sample mean, squared times the frequency divided by the sum of the frequencies minus 1. Now again, x subscript i is the midpoint for or value of the ith class, and f subscript i is the frequency for the ith class. Now let's take a look at an example here, okay? We're going to be approximating the standard deviation from a frequency distribution. Now, the frequency distribution in the table below represents the five-year return rate of return of a random sample of 40 large blend mutual funds. We want to approximate the standard deviation five-year rate of return. So in this case here, we're creating five columns. Our first column has the class, which is the five-year rate of return. We have our frequency. We have our midpoint. And then what does the sample mean? And then we're going to take the midpoint, subtract the sample mean. And then the last column, we're going to take the midpoint minus the sample mean squared and multiply it by the frequency. So let's take a look at the first row here. Okay. Now we pull this information from a previous example. We know that the first class is 8 to 8.99. We know the frequency of that is 2. And we know that the midpoint is taken 8 plus 9 and divided by 2, which is 8.5. Now, if we go back to our sample mean that we found from the previous example, we found that to be 13.1. So now the next step is to do the following. We're going to take the midpoint, which is 8.5, and then we're going to subtract the sample mean, which is 13.1. And that gives us a value of negative 4.6. And so now in the last column, we're going to take negative 4.6 and then we're going to square it. And then we're going to multiply it by the frequency. So we multiply it by the frequency of 2 to give us the final result of 42.32. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. Okay, we know that the next class is 9 to 9.99. So the first thing we're going to do is we know that we have a frequency of 2. We know that our midpoint is 9.5. And we know that the sample mean is 13.1. So we're going to take our midpoint of 9.5. And then we're going to subtract the sample mean to give us a value of negative 3.6. Now once we get that value in the last column we're going to take negative 3.6 and we're going to square it and then we're going to multiply it by the frequency to get 25.92. Let's move to the next class. So for the next class we have 10 to 10.99. We know that the frequency is 4 we know that the midpoint is 10.5, and we know that the sample mean is 13.1. So we're going to take our midpoint, which is 10.5, and then we're going to subtract our sample mean to get a value of negative 2.6. And again, in the last column, we're going to take negative 2.6 and square it, and then multiply by the frequency of 4, to get 27.04. Okay, let's take a look at the next class. We have 11 to 11.99. We know the frequency is 1. 
we know the midpoint is 11.5 and we know the sample mean is 13.1 so we're going to take our midpoint of 11.5 and then we're going to subtract the sample mean of 13.1 to get a value of negative 1.6 and then we're going to take that negative 1.6 and square it in the last column and multiply by the frequency of 1 to get 2.56. Let's move on to the next class. We can see that 12 to 12.99 has a frequency of 6. We know the midpoint of that class is 12.5 and we know the sample mean is 13.1. Let's take the midpoint of 12.5 and then subtract the sample mean to give us negative 0.6. In the last column we're going to take negative 0.6 and square it and multiply it by the frequency of 6 to get 2.16. Let's move to the next class. We have 13 and 13.99 which has a frequency of 13. We know that the midpoint of that class is 13.5 and again we know that the sample mean is 13.1. So we're going to take our midpoint of 13.5 and then we're going to subtract the sample mean of 13.1 to give us a value of 0 0.4. We're going to take 0 0.4 and square it and then multiply it by the frequency of 13 to give us 2.08. Next class, we have 14 to 14.99, which gives us a frequency of 7. Our midpoint for that class is 14.5. We have a sample mean of 13.1. We're going to take our midpoint and then subtract the sample mean to get a value of 1.4. We're going to take 1.4 and square it and multiply it by the frequency of 7 to get 13.72. Let's move on to the next class. We have 15 to 15.99 which has a frequency of 3. It has a midpoint of 15.5 and we know that the sample mean is 13.1. We're going to take our midpoint of 15.5 and subtract our sample mean of 13.1 to get 2.4. So now we're going to take 2.4 and square it in the last column and multiply it by its frequency to get 17.28. The next class is 16 to 16.99, which we know we have a frequency of 1. The midpoint of that class is 16.5 and the sample mean is 13.1. We're going to take our midpoint of 16.5, subtract our sample mean of 13.1, to get 3.4. 3.4 squared times the frequency of 1 gives us 11.56. Let's move on to 17 and 17.99. We know it has a frequency of 0. We know that the midpoint is 17.5. We know the sample mean is 13.1. If we take the midpoint of 17.5 to subtract the sample mean, we get a value of 4.4. Now 4.4 squared times the frequency of 0 gives us 0. Next, the next class is 18 to 18.99. We know the frequency of 0. We know that the midpoint is 18.5. We know that the sample mean is 13.1. Let's take our midpoint and then subtract our sample mean to get 5.4. 5.4 squared times our frequency of 0 gives us 0. Our last class is 19 and 19.99. We know we have a frequency of 0, excuse me, a frequency of 1. We know that our midpoint is 19.5. We know our sample mean is 13.1. The midpoint of 19.5 minus the sample mean of 13.1 gives us 6.4. 6.4 squared times the frequency of 1 gives us 40.96. Okay, now let's take a look here. Well, we know that the sum of the frequencies is going to equal 40. We know the sum of the last column is going to give us 185.6. So let's go ahead and take a look at that here. So we know the sum of the frequencies is 40. 
and we also know that the sum of the last column is 185.6. Since we are finding the sample standard deviation, we're going to take the sum of the last column and then we're going to divide it by the sum of the frequencies minus 1. Well, let's take a look at the formula here. So we have the following. We have the square root of 185.6 and then we're going to divide that by the sum of the frequencies of 40 minus 1. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have the following. We have second square root of 185.6 and then we're dividing that by 40 minus 1 which is 39 and that gives us 2.18150735.9. We're going to round it to three decimal places. So we end up getting 2.182 for our sample standard deviation. Okay.